Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released watchOS 10.4 to the public. watchOS 10.4 is available for all watchOS 10 supported devices and is out around the world at the same time. Now this particular update came in at a fairly small 248 megabytes on my Apple Watch Ultra 2. Let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go down to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about, and you'll see the version is 21T216. And in this update, we do have some new updates and features. The first thing is, once you install this update, you may see a new hello screen. I personally didn't see this, but some people are actually seeing this. We have some new watch faces and we can see those on our iPhone a little bit easier. So if we go into our iPhone and we go to our watch, give it a second to load, go to our face gallery, under our face gallery, give it a second to load here as it takes a moment, and under color, we have some new ones. We have new ones to go along with the all new cases and Apple watch bands that Apple released the other day. So if we go in here, you can see all of the spring 2024 colors at the top, and you'll see all of the different options here. So there's six different ones, and you can choose between any of those. So you've got ocean blue, you have pink, raspberry, soft mint, sunshine, and light blue. So you could add any one of those to the watch. And also some people have been seeing some new Snoopy watch faces as well. So if we go to our watch here, you'll see the new light blue one. And if we go over, let's see if I have Snoopy set. Now you may get this little pop-up where it asks you to use the location and there may be some new Snoopy watch faces as well. There can be quite a few different ones and Apple seems to change these seasonally. So if again, if we go back into it, some of them will be the same. Sometimes you'll run across maybe a few new ones here and there. Now, one of the new updates we saw with iOS 17.4 is new emoji, and there's no difference here as when you're using messages, you'll see those new emoji available here as well. So if we go into messages and you'll see, we have some new emoji here where we have some accessibility emoji with a wheelchair facing right, someone running facing right. And then also we have a mushroom, a lime, a Phoenix, a head nodding up and down, a head turning left to right, broken chains, some family icons, a motorized wheelchair facing right, as well as someone running facing right, someone with a walking stick facing right, kneeling, and more. And then of course you can adjust the skin tone for any one of these. Also, there's new PQ3 encryption that Apple introduced with this update. That will carry across to the watch as well with watchOS 10.4. And if we go to Apple's website about it, they've added PQ3 encryption and Apple says it's the new state of the art quantum secure messaging at scale. I'll link this in the description as it's quite a lengthy description of how it actually works and it's pages and pages. So if you want to see this, that's available now and should be active with watchOS 10.4 and iOS 17.4. Point four. Now, if we go back to the watch, we have some updates with timers. So if we go into, maybe we'll go to the timer app here within the timer app, there's an update where they've changed some of this, where it says one minute, three minutes, five minutes. And while we had some of that before, it looked a little different. So they've updated the overall interface. This was just a screenshot taken before. So you could see the difference. So it's a slight user interface update here. Also, one thing I noticed today is when I was actually traveling using Apple Maps, they've updated this as well. Once you have your route set of where you're going, it will actually show you the estimated time of arrival just below the time. Apple has added some updates for notifications and double tap. If we go into our settings and you have to have an Apple Watch Ultra 2 or Apple Watch Series 9 for double tap, but if we go down to where we have gestures here, under gestures, we have double tap. If you have that enabled and you go into it and then you scroll down a little ways. You'll see as we continue to go to the bottom, we have a new option to ignore double tap. This is if you're using an Apple vision pro. So you can actually gesture using the Apple vision pro by pinching your fingers to select something and it won't trigger double tap on the Apple watch. However, you can turn this off as well if you want, or just turn it on if you have an Apple Vision Pro and you're using that. There's a new feature in notifications on your watch. If we go into our settings, go into notifications, scroll down, you'll see a new option to tap to show full notification. If we enable this, it says Apple Watch can hide the full details of a notification behind a summary until you tap the screen or double tap your fingers. So that's a new feature. And if you have a Series 9 or Ultra 2, you can use double tap. Let me text myself and I'll show you how it works. So on my watch, if I go ahead and send myself a message, give it a second to come in. When it comes in, you'll see it says maybe Aaron Zolo, double tap, 
and it goes right into the full message of what I've said. So that works on any notification now with watchOS 10.4. If we go into the watch app, there's a new option under accessibility with assistive touch. If we go into assistive touch and we have that enabled, we now have the option to confirm with assistive touch. So it says use assistive touch to confirm payments with the passcode or anytime double clicking the side button is required. So if we want to enable that, we can turn that on and then use the, the side button to confirm all of that. So continue on Apple watch. We can confirm it here if we want to use that and set up to use assistive touch for double click. So if we want to use that, we can. Also, there's some updates with Siri. And if we go into settings, these are similar to what we have on iOS 17.4. But if we go into Siri and search, go down to messaging with Siri, we have new options here for if we have messages sent and we want Siri to actually read that back, it can read in multiple languages. So we can set the language we want it to read back in and more than just one. So maybe you have English. English is your main language, German, Korean, and French is secondary. If someone texts you in English, it will read in English. If someone messages you in French, it will read in French or any of the languages we have here from Arabic, Chinese, Hebrew, Italian, down to Spanish, Swedish, Thai, and Turkish. So if you want to set any of those or all of those, you can do that and it will read back in those languages. Also, another thing they've updated Siri with is it can now use the word hey in front of it or disable that, and that works in German as well. It works on iOS as well as watchOS too. Shazam also gets a little bit of an update if we ask Siri to identify a song. What song is playing? You'll see the overall interface is a little bit different. Let me play a song. It recognizes the song and then shows us what the album is. So nothing new there, but while it's identifying, it actually looks a little bit different. Apple has also fixed a couple bugs in this update, specifically one that would cause false touches on the display. So it should be more accurate as far as what it's picking up and registering as touches. Also, they've fixed an issue that prevented contacts from syncing properly from the Apple Watch to your iPhone for some users. So contacts should now sync properly if you're using the contact app or something else. Additionally, there will be security updates. Now, by the time you're watching this video, they may not be out yet. It could take a couple hours. But if we go to Apple's security website, and if we scroll down on the website, you'll see that we have iOS 17.4 and iPadOS 17.4, as well as other releases. However, watchOS 10.4 will be here as well. And when we go into these, you can see all of the different updates from everything from accessibility to kernel and more with a description and impact of what was the problem and what they actually did to resolve solve it. So be sure to check those out if you're interested. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out for yourself once it's released for everyone to see. As far as overall performance, everything seems to load as you would expect. Going into different apps seem to open quickly, just like they did before. You'll see weather is animating there as well. And going into apps we haven't loaded before seems to be plenty fast also. So if we go into maybe noise here and you'll see it immediately starts to measure decibels. So it seems to be pretty good that way and stability is quite good as well. I haven't had any issues while I was running any of the betas and with this version, the public release, I haven't seen any issues as well. As far as battery life, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the battery health. I haven't checked that in a while. Battery health last I checked on my Apple Ultra, Apple Watch Ultra 1 was still 100% and looks like the same is true on Apple Watch Ultra 2. So far, it's been doing pretty good throughout the day. You'll see I'm down to 68%. This has been off the charger for many hours at this point. And while I haven't used it today to work out or use it for the activity monitoring or anything like that, it seems to be lasting a couple days for me, at least on any of the betas it did. And many people that had issues with the battery with previous versions say that this version resolves it, those that have been running the beta. So, so far it's actually as you would expect and fixing issues you may have had before with the battery. As far as watchOS 10.5 beta one, well, we can expect that within a day or so. Typically we'll get that along with iOS 17.5 beta one, possibly after given the sort of staggered nature this time around where they release these. But overall, I would expect that pretty soon where we'll probably see that within a day or two or possibly next week. It just depends what Apple decides to do with that. 
As far as anything else, well, that's pretty much it for this update. A few nice updates, things to match iOS 17.4, and we can expect major features with watchOS 11 when that's shown at WWDC in June. Other than that, I would not expect any major feature updates until then, and we're not sure what's coming with watchOS 11 as well. As far as the watch face I'm using, well, many people have been asking me this in these videos, and if you're not familiar with it, this is the modular watch face. And if we go to edit and check out the complications, you'll see that I have in the middle, an app that's called Lumi. So if we go into that, this is a paid app that I paid for myself. It says countdown to golden hour or one of the best times to actually take photos and video. And you'll see, you can actually see more things such as when night ends and much more. And if we go back, everything else in here is just pretty standard music, compass, weather, messages, and calendar. So other than that, that's all it is, just the modular watch face. Now, if you found anything else in watchOS 10.4, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do if you'd like to get your hands on it. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.